Okay, so in this video, we'll be discussing question 3.35. The question says, in July 2008, the U.S. National Institute of Health announced that it was stopping a clinical study early because of unexpected results. The study population consisted of HIV-infected women in sub-Saharan Africa who had been given single-dose nivirapine, a treatment for HIV, while giving birth to prevent transmission of HIV to the infant. The study was a randomized comparison of continued treatment of a woman after successful childbirth with nevirapine versus lopinavir, the second drug used to treat HIV. 240 women participated in the study. 120 were randomized to each of the two treatments. 24 weeks after starting the study treatment, each woman was tested to determine if the HIV infection was becoming worse, an outcome called virologic failure. 26 of the 120 women treated with nevirapine experienced virologic failure, while 10 of the 120 women treated with the other drug experienced virologic failure. Question A then says, create a two-way table presenting the results of the study. Okay, so now we've drawn the table. So what we know is we have 26 people that use nevirapine and had virologic failure, and 10 that use lopinavir and had virologic failure. And we also know that um, the, the study was split into 120, 120. So we simply say 120 minus 26 to get 94, 120 minus 10 to get 110, and then we total that to get 36, and then 240 minus 36 to get 204. And that's how we draw the table. Question B then says, state appropriate hypothesis to test for independence of treatment and virologic failure. So here we've got our two hypotheses. The null hypothesis says there is no difference in virological failure rates between nevirapine and lopinavir. And the alternative hypothesis says there is a difference in biological failure rates between nevirapine and lopinavir. So if we do this mathematically, our null hypothesis will be PL is equal to PN. And our alternative hypothesis will be PL is not equal to PN. Before we proceed, we now need to check whether we can apply a normal distribution. And once again, we use our two tests, our test for independence and success failure. So with the independence, the first question we ask ourselves is, was a random sample used? And in this case, the question explicitly says a random sample was used, and therefore we can assume independence. So random, therefore independence. Okay, so next we look at success failure. Because we have two treatments, we're going to have to calculate a p-pool. P-pool for the two together. So that's going to be a success of n plus success of l over nn, which is the number of n, plus nl. So if we substitute our values, it's going to be 26 plus 10 over 120 plus 120 and this is going to give us 0.15 okay so we now have the 0.15 so now we say 120 times 0.15 and that gives us 18 right which is bigger than 10 and now we also look at 120 times 0.85 which is going to give us 102, which is also bigger than 10. And therefore, we can say that the success failure test has been achieved. The last question then says, complete the hypothesis test and state an appropriate conclusion. Reminder, verify any necessary conditions for the test. All right, so we start by finding the proportion of a woman that took nevirapine, so PN. And that is simply 26 over 120 which gives us uh, 0 0.22. We then also need the proportion of women that took lopinavir, and that's 10 over 120, which gives us 0 0.08. We can now apply the test. So our test says Z is equal to PN minus PL over the square root of P pooled times 1 minus P pooled over N N 
plus P pulled times 1 minus P pulled over N L. So now we substitute the values. So we get 0 0.22 minus 0 0.08 over zero, the root of 0 0.15 times 1 minus 0 0.15 over 120 and in this case these are both going to be exactly the same so it's again 0 0.15 times 1 minus 0 0.15 over 120 and if we calculate that we then get the z value of 3.04 okay so now that we've worked out our z value we can find our p value Value, which is equal to the probability of the absolute value of z being uh, greater than uh, 3.04. Um, so this then gives us uh, 2 times 0 0.0012 because it's two sided, and that gives us 0.0024, which is a really small number. Um, so if we assume an alpha of, say, 0.01, we can immediately say that we're going to reject the null hypothesis based on that p-value. Okay, so what does this p-value actually mean in terms of the problem? It means that there is a difference in the proportion between patients who took nevirapine versus patients that took lupinavir. 